Time travel is one of the most popular ideas used in books, movies, television, and fiction in general. It's been around for more than a hundred years. At this point, there isn't much to add to the topic of time travel because it's been discussed so thoroughly. Most of its possibilities for storytelling have already been used, but the idea persists. Scientifically speaking, the topic is still alive and being talked about as always. I doubt anyone will ever give up on the idea of time travel, mostly because of how awesome it would be. People have gotten extremely desperate to find out either how we could do it right now, or any evidence that it's already been done. Ideas of people coming from the future to our time have been greatly investigated. People will point at old videos, pictures, artifacts, or movies claiming that they're proof of time travelers. That debate is one for a different video, even though most of them can be easily debunked. But the biggest problem that faces time travel isn't just the paradoxical, but instead is one that I haven't seen commonly discussed. The concept is very simple. Things change with the passage of time. Everything is constantly changing and moving. If I were to go even just one minute into the past, it would most likely leave me stranded in space to die alone. This is all under the assumption that when I go back in time, I stay in the same place of the universe that I was in when I left. In one minute, the Earth will have spun about 16.67 miles when considering the fact that the Earth spins at around 1,000 miles per hour. But that in itself would still land me on Earth and not all that far away from where I started. But then you also have to consider the fact that the Earth is rotating around the Sun at around 67,000 miles per hour, which is about 1,116.6 miles per minute. That would land me 1,133.27 miles away from my starting point on Earth. But let's say we took those factors into account. With those numbers, couldn't we make an accurate prediction about where the Earth would be one minute ago? If the spin of the Earth and the spin of the solar system were the only two factors that we would have to consider, then yes, we could go back in time and still be sure that we would end up on Earth because we would know where the Earth would be at that time. But as you probably have guessed, there is more to it than just those two factors. Next, you'll have to consider the fact that the Earth's rotation around the Sun isn't a perfect circle, but instead is more of an oval or ellipse shape. The perihelion is the closest the Earth ever gets to the Sun, which is about 91.3 million miles or 146 million kilometers. But the aphelion is the Earth's farthest point away from the Sun, which is about 94.5 million miles or about 152 million kilometers away. That's a difference of approximately 3.2 million miles or 5.1 million kilometers, which depending on the part of the year that you're time traveling in, that can be as much as a 12 0.17 mile change every minute. So add that to our total, and we've now moved 1,145.44 miles away from our initial starting location on Earth. An entirely different factor that you need to be thinking about is not only how fast the Earth is moving, but how fast the solar system is moving. It's been calculated that the solar system is currently moving around 43,000 miles per hour in the general direction of Vega, the bright star. That's about 716.6 miles per minute, which adds to the total, putting us around 1,862.04 miles away from our starting point. But our solar system is moving in more than one way, as it's also part of the Milky Way galaxy, which is known as a spiral galaxy. Because of this, you can calculate the time it takes for our solar system to move around the galaxy once, which puts it moving at a speed of around 483,000 to 514,000 miles per hour. We'll take the average of that, which is 498,500 miles per hour, or 8,308.3 miles per minute by our solar system's galactic rotation. That now puts us at 10,165.34 miles away from our start in just one minute. But that's not all. The Milky Way galaxy is also moving through space, at much greater speeds than the ones I just talked about. While these speeds are much more uncertain, it's theorized to be around 1.3 million miles per hour through intergalactic space. But our galaxy is only one part of many galaxies that make up the local group, a series of galaxies that are closest to us. The local group itself is moving through space, and the local group is only part of the Virgo supercluster, 
and that cluster is part of the local super clusters, which it in itself is only part of the vastly larger Pisces Sadis super cluster complex, which is only one part of the incomprehensible observable universe. Each one of these groupings is also moving in its own direction. It's like if you were moving in a vehicle, like a bus, and moved seats. You might be moving in one direction, but the bus itself is also moving, carrying you in its direction as well. Then you run into other issues, like the general theory of relativity, which states that objects with greater mass will cause distortion in space-time, which can be felt in gravity. My point is just that, knowing precisely where the Earth will be in one given minute is nearly impossible in perspective to how large the universe is. We don't have a finite scale of everything, making it impossible to know which way time and space will bring us at any given specific moment. And we're still discovering new parts of the universe all the time. The most we've ever been able to see is the observable universe, which might not be all there is. To know exactly where the Earth will be in one minute, or even one hour ago, would require an unchanging grid to map out all of space. That grid can be warped, twisted, and messed with due to relativity, which adds so much more to consider. So when going forward and backward in time, we certainly wouldn't end up on Earth. But keep writing about it. Continue making stories using time travel as a concept. Because even if we can never do it in real life, it can serve a different purpose. Life just wouldn't be as fun as it is if we knew the answer to everything.